Hi, I'm Kate Krieger Watkins here with the Scoop for Mason County Press, brought to you by Safe Harbor Credit Union. And today I am at G2S, Gateway to Success, with Superintendent Jamie Vanstra. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Kate. Good, good. So we are, is this the second week or the third week of school? Second. Yes. Okay. Second. It goes fast. It I, does. I had to think. Yeah, it does. It does. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about G2S, when it started, how it got established, and kind of we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what the school provides for the community. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're super excited to come into the school year. It's been a good start to the year. Um, you know, we're in our fourth year now, okay. which is kind of wild. You know, as you, as you, you know, continue to do it uh, year after year, you see systems and procedures and things that get into place and make things run more smoothly. Sure. Um, we're still a young school, yeah. so we're still, you know, we're still learning, but um, it's been really cool to see how the schools develop. We have a great staff um, that have been around and, and added some great new members to that team, and so um, we've gotten off to a really good start this year. Um, so, um, you know, I think you asked a little bit about how this got started. Um, you know, I th it really, initially, um, superintendents, local superintendents from the area approached me um, and just asked if I would be interested to develop a kind of a long-range plan to support students who really needed something different than the traditional environment okay. to be successful. And so, you know, as we started to get into that, um, I worked with Tom Johnson from the ESD. We applied for some state grants and, and got those, and it really helped to get things off the ground. But the whole focal point was really looking at the gaps that exist when you apply for a grant like that. You know, you have to establish a need. Sure. And and um, and so really, you know, the idea was that we need to um, better understand and address the individual learning needs of students in our community. And there's a lot of students that fall through the cracks because those needs aren't being met. Um, and it doesn't mean that that we all aren't trying. I think all schools are trying, but um, you know, that was something that we set out to to try to impact. Okay. Well, you talked a little bit about the project-based learning. And I think, I don't, I don't think a lot of people really understand what project-based learning is. They hear project-based and they think, oh, woodshop or, you know, working on something like that. And that whole individual needs kind of idea, because not every, not every student can just sit in a classroom and hear a teacher speak and take notes and do that kind of thing. Or on the flip side, some kids really don't like the hands-on and they like to sit there and just listen and take notes and that's how they learn. So let's talk a little bit about what G2S kind of provides the students here and that project-based learning and what it really looks like for yeah. each of these kids and how you kind of decide, well, student A needs this compared to student B doesn't need that at all, they need this. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think um, it goes back to like what we talked about, about meeting those individual needs. And, um, you know, project-based learning is a tool to do that. And so when we started to look at, you know, the how, you know, I mean, how do we address individual needs of students? It really came to the surface because it allows you to make learning engaging. Um, that's one of the premises of project-based learning is saying, let's connect it to real life, real world, you know, things for students. And it allows you to personalize um, in the sense that um, you can sit down with an individual student and you can say, okay, what credits do you need? So, you, you know, as you look at their needs, one example would be, you know, credits. I mean, where do they need to get the right. course credit? Um, and, you know, and that's something that we talked about that people sometimes forget that, that as we build a project, we're building it from one of the core pieces is how do we align it to, to state standards and credits so we can give a, a math or algebra credit or a um, an ELA credit or whatever that credit is. Right. So, um, but really, I mean, it's sitting down and it's finding out about the individual interests of the student, you know, um, and what things they're interested in, and then working to say, how do we, you know, what are some ideas around that, and then how do we build in credit to that, and, and build, a, build a project. And a project can be built around so many different things. So, um, you know, I was sitting with a student the other day, and it's a student who was at CTE last year, and she was in the A program and had a great experience. She really loves that. So we started to talk about what things here we can do related to that, you know, our grow towers or getting into the greenhouse. We're working to kind of expand that and figure out how we, um, how we have heat in there and watering for, you know, automatic right. watering systems. So she's excited about that and working on that kind of piece and then working, I'm working to kind of see where she needs credit and work with teachers to align that credit. 
So, you know, um, that's, that's an example uh, of a project. Um, I was in the other day with, uh, some, actually just this morning before he came, some students of personal finance. So, you know, uh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, sometimes we do some things too where it's, it's, it's blended. So we might do some online stuff and, and some project-based learning. But, um, you know, it's easier, I think, to make the project-based learning more exciting. And, and Absolutely, really yeah. And right. tailored to an interest is always going to be, if a kid gets to come in and be like, oh, I actually get to earn credit that's, you know, appropriate with the state-aligned curriculum, but it's also tailored to my interest, oh, that seems a little more exciting than just, turn to chapter two, and lesson just, yeah, five, you yeah, know, and just yeah, keep going. So yeah, yeah it yeah. is cool. And I think, I think there is a big misconception about that whole um, wrapped around the curriculum. I think a lot of people feel like that what they're doing maybe out here isn't the same as what they're doing in a regu regular school sure, setting. Sure. But you guys have to follow, you, you can't exist if you don't follow the, the standards of, you know, Michigan Department of Education. Yeah. So these kids are doing these projects and receiving the credits because you, you have to follow rules and regulations Absolutely. and a model. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear yeah. too, just because I think a lot of people think, oh, they just get to pick whatever they want to do. And that's definitely right. not the right. case. So. Right. And every district, um, you know, because we're a public school academy and so we're our own district. Um, and every district, they develop that curriculum. Mm -hmm. Every district's doing that, you know, and so the way we develop that curriculum is through project-based learning. We actually, our teachers have spent a lot of the initial time in these years that we've been new and prior to when we started, is building that curriculum. So building courses through a PBL lens, mm -hmm. okay? And, um, and so, yeah, the curriculum's aligned, it's just that we're working to make the topics that they're studying a little more um, connected to the real life of students. And so, um, and then I talked to you, before, like I was talking before, there are times when then we go to the individual project kind of plan, where you sit down with an individual student and break it down at that level. So it can go both ways, yeah. Sure, let's talk a little bit more about um, the credit recovery yeah. programs that you guys have and what that kind of looks like out here too, because there are some students that have left school for a while and come back, but this is another opportunity for them to kind of tailor their own program yeah, to get yeah, credits. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of, you know, as you kind of jump into that, I think there's a lot of misperceptions too about the students that need something different. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of students for a lot of different reasons um, that maybe a larger traditional school might not work, and we don't, I think there's a lot of confusion about who those kids are you know, and where they come from. Um, you know, they can be students that come from under-resourced families where they don't quite have the support at home and things that create struggles. They can create academic struggles. They can create social-emotional struggles. It can be kids from very supportive and um, solid homes that, you know, they have different things going on. And it can be anxieties. It can be different things. And so, you know, as we look at those individual needs, you know, um, there's a lot of things. So like you talk about credit recovery, that's, that's one of m many needs that you kind of go, how do we start to effectively address these things? And so, um, yeah, we have built that into our, into our program. We actually have a credit recovery teacher, Carrie Newberg. So that's a dedicated teacher that that's her role. Um, she's a reading specialist and a lot of students who struggle academically, um, reading ties into that. So that's a great connector. So she can help to build those individual projects with students and look at those academic um, challenges that they might be facing or, or life circumstances they might be facing that are causing them to, to struggle with credit. So um, it's a great, great program. And um, we also have a virtual learning. We hired Phil Quinlan um, last year and he serves as our virtual learning coach. Okay. And that's another, I would say, place where we focus on some credit recovery too because a lot of those students are students who um, being in the building regularly doesn't work for them um, because of their lifestyle or just because and when I say lifestyle I mean they may have to be working um, to kind of pay their own bills or whatever it is or support the family um, and so they come in periodically but that's another way that we we help kids to recover credits um, through online work and also building customized projects with them. Sure if there was one thing you could tell the public about the school what would it be? Um, I'd say that it's different than what most people think. And I, I tell them that I think if they came in and spent a little time here, they'd probably be blown away um, by what, what really takes place here. And those students and faces who are really here um, probably are not, 
not what they their perceptions are. So, um, yeah. Cool. I, I'd, uh, you know, one thing and we're, as we talk to, you know, we talk about the idea of being G2S strong here a lot. And um, we talk about, you know, when we talk about that, we talk about um, acceptance, we talk about, you know, teamwork, we talk about resilience. Um, and those are things that we have a really amazing culture here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, work for, and, and you know, all schools, again, we're all working to do similar things as we, we all want a positive school culture. Um, but it's hard, and I think we've worked really hard here. Um, the smaller environment, I think, actually helps with that in some senses, but it's really cool to see the way kids interact and to see the values that we're putting, you know, pushing out to students saying this is what we need to be about and this is why it's important. And I think we're really seeing a lot of buy-in from that with okay. students and staff, and um, that's what they want. And so they start to then, um, they start to, direct that culture right and it's Build not it it's not always you know us and so it, it's just been really cool and so I um, we're excited about that and we talk a lot about being strong and um, and being the wolf pack right um, you know that's the it's the strength of the individual wolf um, but it's also the strength of the pack mm -hmm. you know going back to that, that quote, so. I like that that's cool and I think if you were to ask any kid whether or not they would want to feel you know safe and secure in a situation or just left to their own, you know, I think the majority of them would say they, will, they want that security, they want those people around to have like that strength and that build up for them, you know, and it does definitely, you can see it playing off of the other kids and that kind yeah. of thing, and it, it builds that, that culture of, you know, really like that they belong together, that, you know, and it makes better work environment for the kids too, so I think that's really cool that you guys do that. And I, and I love that the, you use the word safe and secure. It's really crazy to do that because when we go to what we, I, how we, the definition we have for Wolfpack is strong is one of the things we say is safety and security. And people talk a lot about it. We're like, well, what do you mean safety and security? You know what I mean? Are you talking about the building being safe from threats? And, and we, there are those levels of fire drills or emergency. Right. Things. That's part of that. Right. But another part of that is just um, students feeling safe with other students. Mm -hmm. um, students feeling like their individual... Um, differences are going to be respected right and, and understood and, and understood yeah. and that's it's huge and even when I go back to that thing of anxiety you know that's a great example of we see a lot of people in our lives and even as in schools students in schools they're feeling things on the inside that they that other people don't really know right and so I think the idea of how do we try to understand what their experiences are and create an environment like you said that it gives that safety and security sure. and that it's okay a big deal. you know it's okay that you're, you're struggling with whatever it might be you know because probably there's somebody else here that is too yeah. so I mean that also builds that bond too yeah. so yeah it's and, really cool and we're gonna put this into place to help to address that right you know be and to know that there's a plan and a way mm -hmm. and again I know all schools are doing this um, it's exciting it's a time of the year I know all schools are getting off the ground and it's fun to see that um, I just, you know, our commitment is to really focus on those individual needs of students, and it's not just about project-based learning. That's a small part of what we do. It's, it's, it's a part, one of the tools that we have to, to make that happen at G2S. So um, it's been cool to have the time to talk with you, yeah. and hopefully this has been something that helps people understand a little bit more about what we do. I hope so, too. Thanks so much. Uh, for any other news, go to MasonCountyPress.com, and our weather is always brought to you by Smith & Eddie Insurance. And again, I think I can say, if you haven't come out here to check it out, and if this could be a possibility for your kid, come out and or, check it out. Or, or if they it, just want to check it out, yeah. you might, yeah, you're welcome to come just see, what, see what's going on. Right. There's a lot of stuff going out here at G2S.